Well, dude, Asher, thanks for uh, for joining us, man. What's going on? Not much, man. Glad to be here. Of course, the second that you started, the the whirring of drills start, started upstairs. That's like typical. So for I New apologize. York, it, yes. I'm assuming you're in New York, right? I am in New York. Yeah, that's that's typical. It's you guys are always building something, so uh, there's always something. We've uh, we're, we're used to it, man. How the how only was... place that's worse is actually Montreal. Montreal, the I, I every place that's where we shoot, and every place is under construction. It is so, insane. Uh, so you guys shoot the show in Montreal? Yes, that is freaking cool. Yeah, have you got, <laughs> have you have you have you grown to love the city? I do. Yeah, I think you know it's so fun because. Um, I feel like as an actor, you spend a lot of time uh, trying to tether yourself to New York or L.A. You're trying to be available because, of course, your time is irrelevant. Uh, you're just trying to bend yourself to be available to the, the possibility of work. So the idea of getting a job that then allows you to travel a little bit and allows you to see a new city is very exciting because uh, you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm making up a little bit for all of the, the times that I said, no, I can't go on that trip because I might get an audition. Ooh, hey, I would rather take Montreal over uh, L.A. any day of the week. Me? But, uh, yes, sir. R r remind me. So Montreal is a predominantly French-speaking city, is it not? Yes. I, um, I, 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 my experience is 50-50, but we're also in a very – we may be in a slightly more Anglo area. But, yes, it's uh, – uh, there's a lot of French going on. I wish I could say that I have picked up a lot. I, I'm horrible with languages. And so it's one of those things where I just acknowledge my weakness – and, and move on. But like, you know, Rose is in the makeup trailer, like reading French books and like, you know, and, and Brandon is taking French lessons and it's it just, you know, they're just assholes. They make me feel stupid. I don't like it. Yeah. Hey, you know, I, I barely speak American uh, all that well. So, uh, <laughs> well, your first yeah, problem right there. Language is never, uh, never stuck, nor did instruments. Yeah. That's, that's the story of my life, man. We just sort of, uh, we, we, we rough through it, but, uh, how how was uh how was the orange uh glow in New York a few weeks back? Oh wow, that was that was intense, man. That was I've never really seen anything like that. And and um it was one of those things where like I saw the first bit of it and I was like, wow, this is crazy, and then kind of turned away. And and it just it just kept getting more and more intense. And it really didn't like I, I couldn't capture it on camera to express how crazy it really was. Uh, but like I had some friends who were supposed to come into town and I called them and I was like, I don't think that you should be here. Like, this is not, you shouldn't like suddenly everyone was wearing a mask. So <laughs> I, I was going to suddenly mask masks up? were very popular. Uh, yeah. I masked. Yeah. I was like, yeah, my God, you could taste it. You could feel it in your lungs, you know? So having grown up in California, yeah, the, the wildfires were, were always so common. But I remember I was in actually, I was in SEAL training. It was 2003. And there was a fire while we were going through SEAL training. And you could see, the again, the, the, the orange sort of yeah. glaze or, or had overtaken uh, San Diego, much like it had taken over New York. And I remember we show up in the morning at like 4.30 a.m. And the instructors come out and they're like, you little piss ants. The air quality, uh, we, because of the air quality, we legally can't train you. So they eventually cut us loose, and they're like, you guys are going to pay for this. Uh, you're going to make up for like two – well, it ended up we had two days off. They're like, you're going to pay make up. for the yeah. weather. You're going to make up for two days all in one day. So we're going to do three days of training in one day, and uh, they hammered us. Uh, but, dude, oh at, at the time, we're like, two days to recover was in, in sleep was like a, uh, a godsend, man. But um, you, so you grew up in New York, is that correct? I, I grew up in New York and, and in a very rural part of New Jersey. So like th there wasn't much of a town where I was. So New York kind of became the, the destination or the kind of cultural center of my life. And then of course, you know, Getting into acting, it, it just the, the magnetic pull towards New York just intensified. Um, and then so I was here a lot through high school and then college, of course, was here as well. And so New York has just kind of been my uh, my kind of found home. It, but I was actually in San Francisco for three years, by the way, speaking of that was 
uh, uh, you mentioned that earlier. Uh, I went to grad school in San Francisco and I loved San Francisco. Oh, dude, it's a great place. It's, it's, it's great. Hey, Beautiful. they're, they're going through some struggles right now. They'll figure it out. They are. I know. I'm sorry uh, to hear that. Every, everyone is always doom and gloom. Like California is lost. And like, it is still one of the most beautiful states in, yes. uh, in the country. You could be, uh, surfing, uh, in the morning, skiing in mm -hmm. the, uh, the afternoon, but, um, what, what, what years in San Francisco? 2011 to 2014. Great years. Yeah. As, as they were, the, they were the good years for the city. Here. Yeah, and and uh, and the Giants won, and uh, the Niners were good for a couple of years. For that, the Giants actually beat. I come from a family of Detroit fans. I'm I'm I I am I, I am a fan. I of course my my football allegiance lies far elsewhere, as you well know. Um, but uh, so that World Series, that Giants Tigers World Series, I wasn't so thrilled, but the city was uh, ecstatic. Yeah, I I do remember that, and those were some good. Uh... Uh, Niner year, who was uh, the Niners? Uh, Kaepernick was there. Kaepernick was there, and uh, I'm drawing a blank on him. Yeah, the it coach. was the Alex Smith Kaepernick. Oh, um, uh, Harbaugh. Harbaugh. Yeah, yeah. I, I, he is actually an interesting character. I had the opportunity to uh, sit down with him, and he was just reciting uh, Shakespeare left and right. He would work in really a conversation. Oh, just prolific, oh man, prolific mind. Uh, had a deep, deep respect for him and what he's done with Michigan. Um, wow. If I had known that, time. I would have tried to pull him into the Jaguars video. So it's not really a role for him, but that's, that's a funny little, uh, I didn't know that. So you just brought up the Jaguars video. So first off, you brought up that your family is totally eclectic and has no loyalty whatsoever. <laughs> Having grown up in New York, you guys are Detroit's <laughs> fans and now you're, you're, you're uh, Jaguars fans. Uh, yeah. so you've been a fan of them since the they team won. stood up. The team stood up. That's oh, that's I like that. That's a good way to put it. it my my dad is a lifelong Lions fan and was basically like, and we were my brother and I were being raised as Lions fans, and he was basically like, save yourself, get out of here. It's going to be so brutal. You know, live your life. Um, but he did say, don't be a Jets fan or a Giants fan. Go be like a unique person. Be your, an individual. You know, um, and uh, and that was 1995, and they were the new team. And instantly, within like a year, my dad's seen the Lions win one playoff game in 70 years. And I got two in my <laughs> second year of fandom. Uh, and it was almost three. So uh, they were really good to me in the beginning. And then there was a, a dark time for a long time, uh, which also uh, uh, paralleled a long stretch of unemployment in my career. So even through the suffering, I felt like we were kind of bonded, you know, uh, and uh, just, yeah, we, yeah, we came closer through the suffering. And then um, since the show has popped up with ghosts and, and the team has kind of reached out and, and pulled me into the family, which I'm, you know, just thrilled with. Uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. I think things are getting uh, interesting in Jacksonville. And that's, I'm always going to yeah, see are. teams that, that, that have had a tough decade or, or, or more. Or two. Struggle. Yeah, or two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was trying to be somewhat kind there. Uh, Thank you. Is there, are you a fan of Florida? Cause it seems like a lot of New Yorkers are moving to, uh, to Florida. In fact, somebody told me, uh, they predicted Miami will be the next, uh, wall street or, or a wall street mini, uh, within the, uh, the next few years. Isn't Miami going to be like underwater in the next few years or something? I don't See, know. Yeah, I shouldn't you, say that. You went right to the doom, I, and, gloom. doom and gloom. Yeah. Um, I am, I am, uh, I don't know that I'm a big fan of Florida per se. I, I am, um, I have grown to have a real affinity for Jacksonville because I'm there a lot. Um, but, uh, I mean, I think there are pockets in Florida. I, you know, I swam with the manatees and, and near Tampa, that was pretty nice. But like, I don't know if that's like an indication of, Oh my God, I love this state. Uh, yeah, I, I I'm not moving to Florida anytime soon. I don't <laughs> It's uh, a tax benefit wise. It's, moment, it's a great place. So yes, I understand. Weird, yeah. No, it's yeah. You know, I, my wife is so tired of me hearing, uh, she, every like year I'm like, Hey, we need to move because I, you know, most of my, my adult life was, uh, on the move, always mm. training, always, but she's like, you need to get over this pneumatic thing. Cause she's like, we just bought a house in Austin. My family's here. We uh -huh. are not moving for 10 years. Get over it. If you need to go take a vacation to Idaho, Idaho, go for two weeks, enjoy yourself, come back. We're wow. in Austin. So I tell laying you, down the wall there. Do, I, hey, so are you married yet? I love it. No. No. Good on you. Good on you. 35. <laughs> 35. You're going to get yourself time. in trouble. Hey, I, I, <clears> every word that comes out, we were walking into a great event, Folds of Honor, 
which is an amazing organization that supports both vets and, uh, mm-hmm. and first responders. And, and I was married prior to, to this one. And, and I meant to pay her a compliment. We're walking into this gala. And so she's in a gown. I'm in, I'm in a uh, formal wear. And I'm like, Hey, you're the, you're the best wife I've had. And she <laughs> says back, she's like, so you're basically saying I'm your second wife and, I, and I'm the best. And I'm like, oh, ah, yeah. that came out wrong. Just take the compliment. Yeah. Take the compliment, man. Oof. So uh, I, I did read your bio and I love what you can find on Wikipedia. I think that's always the go-to. Oh my God. Not that What's Wikipedia. On? Well, no, no. So, you know. The fun thing like, about Wikipedia is that it's, I'm not the one writing it. Oh, so no. it's like, it's always the found information of what people have compiled. So, okay. So what, what's, what's on there now? Well, I, I do, I do love the, the comment. You grew up in uh, Califon. Uh, I did. Is it? Uh, New Jersey, the one yes. Jew uh, in a very, <laughs> very not Jewish community, man. Oh, well, that's true. I don't know if I'm the one Jew, but it was certainly a not Jewish community. That is true. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, you had a similar up- upbringing. Far Hills Country Day School in Newark <laughs> Academy. Very, very posh. It's okay. I went to yeah, Bellarmine College posh. Preparatory, uh, which was like the uh, the Jesuit high school. Of course, oh. I did not uh, excel like you did. So it sounds like you did very well in school and then eventually went to Columbia uh, for film and uh, it was it film and English film and English. Yeah. I, I had, you know, I got really lucky because my, my parents are, are, are really driven and passionate um, people. And so, you know, and I was dyslexic and I, I needed a lot of extra help and, and my parents helped me find the way to, to get that. Um, so, so I, I was really fortunate in that regard um, the stuff of, I think, I think I just left a lot of those schools, um, particularly at a younger age, just feeling like, like kind of the odd man out or kind of the, the, the other in the group. And so I've just always kind of had that a little bit of the outside looking in point of view, um, which is not always a bad thing. You know, I think it sometimes it lets you kind of see a little bit more, a little more of a 360 point of view. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a, a, an interesting Often lonely, but an interesting uh, way to grow up. <laughs> hey, I, they're, they're, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of benefits to being an outsider. My, my brother and I never really fit into the uh, the surrounding area around us, but nor did my mm. parents. I mean, my parents uh, came from nothing, and uh, he, yeah. built, my dad, had built a, a very successful marketing and advertising agency, and he wanted the best for his mm. kids, much like your parents. So, yeah. But, but let me ask this: so, it did was film theater a passion early on, or is that something that was maturated developed over time um it was it, it from once it started it took over um i when uh, it's funny when the producers came out that musical the mel brooks musical which of course we had seen the movie years ago my parents has raised us on all the mel brooks, like all these old uh films and um and so we were obsessed with that i think i had that whole thing memorized back to front and uh and and we got so into it and there was something about that and then i did it in like a scene competition or something and and won some award i I don't even know what the competition was some new jersey thing and so like once that kind of happened and 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 i was like oh my god this is fun because i was so shy before that and stuff like that and a few other little you know performances that i did in school kind of um made me gave me the sensation sensation of being part of a community and i think storytelling was the way to do that and so uh, that was a thrill. And then, of course, the reasons why you are in the business, I think, can change over time because yeah. it's a brutal business. So you have to kind of find your motivation in different ways. Um, but, yeah, that, that once that took over, that was it. Does, does Hollywood kill the the let's say the innocence of why you originally picked up the, the art a little bit? Yeah, it's it's. You know, it's hard because you, um, in, in essence, what we are doing as an art form is all about forming connections and um, and a kind of sense of community or family, even in the creation of a thing and then also in the storytelling of a thing. Like we're always trying to figure out how does one character relate to another character. And, and you know, it, it's all, it's a very human process. And the business of it, often feels very like mathematical and cold and cut and dry. And so what happens a lot is you feel like I spent a lot of years in my years of unemployment. I felt like the business just like hated me. Like I just couldn't get a job. I hated me. And the truth is 
that's actually the, 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 that was the nicer cover of what was actually happening. And the reality was they just don't care. And it's not that and they, they don't need to care because everyone is just out to do their own thing. And there's a, a big supply demand. <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, everything is one sided. So it's it is the kind of thing that the people that I have. Bonded to and, and, and felt really close with who are, are still fighting and going and, and creating things are always the people. And this, I felt this in grad school too, were always the people who knew it's never going to hand me anything. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with creating my own stuff and I'm okay with, you know, banging against the wall and I'm okay with the grind of doing this thing because the reward is so, or I should say the process is so pleasurable. Um, and if you can find a joy in the process, but that's so hard, but if you can, the rest of it is tolerable because you're just hungry for a chance to work. It, so having just guest after guest on here from, you know, we're agnostic from actors like yourself to, you know, Bernie Marcus, the uh, Home Depot uh, founder oh, wow. to, to, to Mountaineers. Uh, hell, we just had Kelly Slater on. That seems to be a common theme among side performers mm. is that they've learned to love the journey because when they get to the destination, it never is as rewarding as they thought. And they're like, yeah, well, okay, awesome. On to the next. Yeah, I think that's the thing. You know, it's, I have to tell you, like the, the, the joy of, of shooting ghosts, it is such a joyful experience. But the thing that makes it so special and what we got, I'm going to get emotional here, Jesus. But the thing that we got lucky with is it's this, <laughs> it's this group of people, right? The fact that you, you go through all these rungs, all these rungs of this obstacle course of getting this job. And I just so happen to get to do it with a group, a cast who um, I, I would just hang out with in real life because it's fun. You know, just getting us on, all on a Zoom is just, you know, we're just laughing our asses off. So the process of that is, is really wonderful. But what, what, you're, what you're, you are alluding to, which is really true, is that nothing lasts, everything ends. And so there is a, we're kind of all in this thing and then the day it's over, we're off. And I'm very lucky because I have a, this show is, the, is like the only kind of thing that lasts for multiple years. But for the most part, you know, you go shoot a movie, you're, you're on that for a month or two and it feels like a family. And then the experience feels like you're in middle school again. It's like, like the whole, that, that, that thing is the whole world and there's nothing else. And then suddenly that world is gone. And so there are a lot of like existential moments that you come to as an actor that my buddies who went into finance are not dealing with. Um, uh, so there is an element of kind of like you have to more proactively take care of your own wellness and self, you know, self care because no there is a lot more tome, uh, uh, turbulence. You're shaking yeah, that, your head. You're like, yeah, no, this no, sounds no, nuts. I don't want to. No, 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 not at all. It, it makes total sense. In, in, you know, I think it's just with age and wisdom, you got to realize. I mean, you see people that take things so freaking personal. They get a no and they take it so personal. Yeah, and, I, and I've been them. I, I've been that person where it hurts so much because you really you develop a relationship with these things. Especially my job is to look at a page and develop a relationship to what's on the page, and then you're going to determine if I get to continue to have that relationship. So if you say no, it feels like a breakup, you know? Um, but this is the, the trick is saying, can you approach it as though saying, uh, Oh, uh, the audition is my job. I'm here to do this audition. And I, and the end is, it, it, you know, I, I accept the end when you start, you know, and then anything else you just get is bonus really hard to do. And I'm not very good at it, but sometimes <laughs> I am, but you know, you, you get better over time. Hey, so, you know, having, given 20 years of my life when I left my tribe, as I say, mm -hmm. uh, the, yeah. the SEAL team I was at, dude, I spiraled for two years. And it, 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 which was, which is way too freaking long to realize that, hey, that's just life. You know, you're part of something great, but nothing lasts forever. You know, bad times, those two shall pass. Great times, those two shall pass. That is just yeah. life. Keep moving forward. And um, by the way, I don't know that two years is, I mean, I, I, I get that because it's also, it, it, uh, and this is, I think, a thing with breakups is like the deeper you are into that relationship, the harder it is to leave it, right? So 
if you are in a, if you are in a relationship with a job or a, or, or a group or whatever it is, and there's more and more time invested in that, there is a mourning process. And the hard thing is that we don't usually talk about like in culture or whatever the zeitgeist, we don't usually talk about those kinds of changes and how they, we just think about, oh, you get the job, you lose the job, you get the job, you lose, you know, but there is a kind of, there's a transitional period. It changes your identity a little bit because you're giving yourself to this thing, you know? Um, and uh, yeah, it, 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 there's a, there's a, um, a whiplash thing that can happen to you. And you should give, you, you know, I, I say that the SEAL teams were, were the military was a part of my yeah. DNA. It should. Because if it's not, that means you didn't commit yourself uh, fully. Yeah. You, you have to. It, it, you're either all in or you're not. And yes. um, once you go all in and, and you give it your all and sometimes sacrifice parts of your life for something and that ends. Yeah, that's just that, – that's hurtful, man. Uh, that's hurtful. Yep. I did have a buddy, I, and I remember, and he just had developed like this this thickness. And I remember uh, I, I broke up with a girl here, and I, I took it harshly. And, uh, and he's like, Hey man, uh, what happens when your dog dies? And I'm like, uh, you mourn. He's like, no, you just buy a new one. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, that's a theory. I'm like, you definitely, uh, you've definitely, uh, I wouldn't, some, I wouldn't uh, tell that to your girlfriend, Yeah, no, 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 uh, no, no. but um, as a life, I get that. Yes. I guess. Yes. He, he's a tough dude. And, 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 uh, you know, he, he, yeah, he's, he's got an empathetic side to him. He just was, uh, probably trying to, uh, expedite the process for me but <laughs> we, so you know funny you brought up your, your friends in finance who god i don't envy people in finance when uh when i got out i went and got my mba at the university of texas and i thought i wanted to go venture capital private equity or investment mm -hmm. banking which is usually investment banking as a as a route to to those other two but man that is a that is a rough job dude and having watched people in it it's just it's rough, but I mean, funny you bring that up as you play Trevor yeah. on uh, <laughs> Ghosts, which, and bro, you, you look like you could be casted out of like Wolf of Wall Street or actually oh, good. Wall Street. You play it well. Um, Thank you. It looks like you guys have a fun crew. It looks like you guys actually yeah. enjoy each other and, and, and have fun. How rare is that? Because we always hear the stories of like, oh, you love this movie, but the backstory was the two lead actors wouldn't even like talk to each other uh yeah. after the takes yeah i think it's really rare um i'm lucky this is my first time doing uh being a, a series regular on a show so i uh i'm not even sure that i can really comprehend how lucky we are because i haven't uh, had the experience of the other ones but I, I have been a guest on a lot of other shows where you you know you can step on the set and you get a, a vibe of the thing really quickly if you're like, oh, all right, don't, maybe don't talk to that person or maybe, you know, huddle over here, whatever it is. And and it's something that we try to do work very hard in our show of making sure that our guest stars are having a really good time and feel like they're part of it uh, because we need them. You know, it's, it's a really hard job to come into a machine. It's like, you know, you talk about the football thing earlier. It's like stepping onto a game real quick to catch one pass uh, with no warm up, and then you catch it, and you're off, and you're done. Like that's what it's guesting on a show is like, and so um, it's very easy for these things that are uh, um, uh, really unique and special opportunities to get taken for granted when you know you're going to be back next week. And so uh, everyone in our cast, uh, I think, is very grateful for this. Like this is this is something that has enriched everyone's life. It was something that. Uh, um, for, and it's different reasons for each person, but is giving each of us something that we didn't quite have before. Um, and so we're all grateful. And I think we, we work from that place, which then what's really special about that is that then we're working together because the idea is, oh, what's unique about this is I get to work with these people, not, oh, this is my shot. Let me go get my thing. Da, da, da. It's, it's a collaborative process and having a lot of people from theater and people who come from an improv background in our group uh brings out more of that ensemble vibe whereas i think in a lot of shows it's very easy because you spend a lot of your time alone as an actor it's very easy to see yourself in your own tunnel um yeah so clearly you've uh you've crafted your 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 skills at at the art of acting i know you've done a lot of uh writing producing and uh and directing as well where where does the passion lay, lie for you is it all of them uh, or, or do you think eventually you, you, you know, you step out of acting 
uh, more so and into to into to produce producing and uh, directing. I don't I don't know. You know, the more you know, obviously there's a strike right now. So the thing that I've, I'm uh, no one's doing anything when the last thing I did was the was the Jags video, and so I'll just go with that. Like the ability to use all those forms all those mediums to create something is just thrilling, right? So like with the Jags video, I couldn't figure out the ending. I just couldn't figure out, I needed something that was a big crescendo for Trevor, uh, who's uh, Trevor Lawrence, the Jaguars quarterback to pop at the end. And I was like, I just, I need a build, I need something. And because I wasn't just the actor and I wasn't just the writer and I wasn't, you know, just the director, like I, I was wearing multiple hats, I could come up with the thing of, you know what, let's get on the center of the field, let's print out like 500, pieces of blank paper and just make a mess and get those like stupid epic shots of this like gladiator ish, but it's a writer and he's looking at the script, you know, like, I, but because I, I wasn't tied to a single hat, I had access on all those fronts to write it and to set up the shots and everything. So I, I don't know that it's necessarily one particular lane. It's just the creative impulse that, um, it gives you the freedom to try different things. Does that make any sense? It, it makes total sense. Um, okay. it, and, you know, first off, when I brought up the Jaguar video, I was expecting something totally different. You know, one of those, you know. Oh, you mean when rock. you started playing it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I oh. thought it was, I thought it was going to be something along the lines of, you know, that, that, that build up, that serious build up. It's our time. We're, we're going to, you know, <laughs> and the fact that it was so, you know, so well done and so comedic. Um, I, I even read one, uh, one, uh, you know, writer said, uh, it's worthy of an Emmy. Um, <laughs> when, when, so who approached you first? Did the Jags approach you? Yeah. The Jags, um, approach. Yeah. So the last year has just been so much fun. Cause I've got gotten to know a lot of the guys, um, but a lot of the players, but also the people in the front office and, and, and on their, uh, social media and media teams. And so a bunch of guys approached me and said, we want to do something with the scripted idea, but we don't really know that world of scripted comedy and, and, and television and stuff. Um, and so wondering if you could help out. And then I spent a long time, uh, um, I'm very, and, and if any of them were here, they would laugh at me right now because I would start every meeting with like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. Like I'm very cautious to, to step into the um, uh, fray. And, and they really invited me in and said, this is not our world come, you know, and, and eventually, um, I wrote the script uh, and I was like, well, why don't you guys all write scripts too and I'll write mine and then you guys can decide what you like the most. And, and we did that and they, they went with mine, which was, I was very thrilled. I was, it's a lot of fun. And, and then it was them just kind of trusting me, uh, this guy from the outsider they didn't really know to, to kind of take over and, and they gave me enough rope to hang myself. And, and I think I, I, barely uh, uh, survived. Um, but I think we created something really special. And then even just the ability, the buy-in of like the second that we had Doug Peterson, who's their coach, who said he was going to be in it. And by the way, I defy you to find another NFL coach who'd be down, who would have the, the humility and the creativity and just, you know, the sense of fun to, to do that. Um, and then players started jumping on board and Shad started jumping on board. Like everyone was, um, was so down and uh, it just felt like it was such a little, it was, you know, it's that experience again, like there was kind of a family that was created and everyone was, it was just made more special by all the different pieces that were in it. I, I was laughing my ass off when uh, you, you're briefing the team and it says football is easy, <laughs> acting is hard. And it just resonated with me. I, I, I was laughing there. That was well done, man. Oh, thank you. I have to, I have to, um, so we snuck into their, uh, to the team meeting room and put up those slides. And then it's just the magic of movie making because none of the players are there. And we're going back to old footage of them. And there's a shot of Tyson Campbell that's one of my favorite shots in the whole thing of him just looking up terrified yeah. when I say that, you know, uh, anyone can be written out of the show. Uh, yeah, it was just so much fun. I love it. It was well done, man. It was well done. Thanks. Um, so, you know, beyond that, uh, you know, I read that you're a lecturer often. So oh, yeah. you're, you're giving back uh, to. To, to young uh, aspiring actors, producers, writers. But what's even more interesting is you actually worked with inmates. Yeah. At, was it Rikers? Yeah. Rikers, yeah. Yeah, I, I, that, that kind of, so my like side job, the thing that was keeping me 
uh, you know, paying bills and stuff was I was a substitute teacher in South Central LA wow. in elementary school. And so that was kind of the, uh, it was hard. It's one of the hardest things I've ever done. <laughs> Teachers should be paid more. <laughs> Agree. Um, Agree. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was the beginning of like, and, and I got, I had a master's. So I was like, Oh, if I could find a way for my like survival thing to be something tied to acting. And so I can just keep the creative juices all flowing. It's not like a, you know, I'm, switching the clock on and off. I'm, I'm actually like always feeding into the same uh, uh, pool. Um, so when I moved back to New York, I, I wanted to get a job at Hunter, which is where I am now, uh, but there wasn't any openings. And I had heard of this opportunity at Rikers, which wasn't a job, it was just a volunteer thing, but I thought, oh, that's so cool. And if I could find a way to do that, I could, I could teach anywhere because the thing, of course, at Rikers that you're dealing with is that none of them have to listen to you. <laughs> your, your job is to go in and try to um, inspire, right? And so um, I had this opportunity to go in and, and, and try to distill acting into something that was really digestible um, and fun. And, uh, and of course, something that happens when you act is that you are, there's always the nerves, right? And when we get nervous, we all become really, really dumb. Uh, like I'm never stupider than when I am just about to perform <laughs> it is my dumbest sense of self. Um, and so find simplifying what you're trying to do, um, is really helpful in that regard. And so then, um, yeah, it just, it just, it, it was a really challenging thing, but it was a really rewarding thing because you feel like you feel something you don't often feel as an actor. You feel like you can actually have an effect on someone when you teach. In that, yeah. And, and there's no greater pursuit than to have a student eventually outperform uh, the teacher. I mean, that's the, uh, the whole goal. I, first off, I would have been uneasy to go to Rikers. I don't know why just every, every movie I always think of ends up in a, a prison uh, outbreak. And, yeah, it's not, a, it's not a pleasurable commute. I will tell you that. And it's certainly I, – I, every time I went there, I felt like, why is there a storm – over Rikers, but it doesn't seem like it's anywhere else in New York. It just seems like there's always clouds uh, formed above it. Were, were you pleasantly surprised by how the inmates, you know, in, in a, what, let's be honest, it's a miserable routine, just, just place. Yes. Were you able to get the inmates to just let loose for a little bit and engage in their, uh, their, their, their comedic side? I would, I would, um, the, my my greatest successes would come when I could get people in small groups or one on one. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a few moments that and a, a few sessions that I was like, wow, that's that was really, really special and unique. I remember I had one thing where I had a kid who I, I, I was, was clearly dyslexic and uh, and we went through and, um, you know, a lot of times people try to learn lines, which is a very uh, um, it, it, it's, I get the concept of it, but it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Cause like, if I asked you what you did yesterday, you would probably tell me like 50 things you did, but you wouldn't tell me anything that anyone ever said. Um, so our brains don't really connect that way. Our, our brains connect to things that happen. So I kind of went through this piece with him and we kind of broke it down in terms of, of, of what was happening in images and stuff like that. And we just went through it like once or twice. And then I came back the next day and, and he, it was, it, it, he had it completely. It was completely off book and was like playful and ready to play and ready to try stuff. So like that kind of thing where I have less time than I would have with most people, but we're able to get to such a fun place imaginatively that things stick. Like those kinds of things were the really rewarding things. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you'd hold on to those because it, it ev everything's kind of stacked against you. Even getting in, there were many times that I would go and I, I couldn't even get in because there was some security thing or some, or you know, lots of complex things happening. Right? The, those those are the things that that stick with you for life. Uh, yeah. While while it's nice to get a a hefty paycheck every once in a while, uh, I blow through that quickly on very cool. Uh, fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you something else. The other thing that you learned that I got from Rikers is that there's a lot of gray area in a lot of places. Like you, the things I never felt more, com more complicated about the world than I did at Rikers. Cause it, it's very easy to forget that there's a lot of humanity in there. There, there is a ton. 
uh, just locking people up and throwing away the key is not not always the right solution unless they're just you know completely complete sociopaths with no regard for for other humans. But there's a lot of stories in there that that quite frankly uh, we as a nation could have set them up for a different path. Um, yeah, and also Rikers is a jail. A lot of people don't know this. It's not a prison. Mm -hmm. These these people are awaiting trial. You know, it's a it's a very um, anyway. I won't go too too uh, crazy into it, but it's it, it's certainly not a good situation. No, it's not. Um, I'm very grateful for the things I have and the up 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 upbringing that uh, that I had. And the fact that my parents laid a uh, a very pa uh, clear path um, for me. You know, I, I do want to ask you because you brought it up, dude. The 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 rider strike. Mm. I see both sides. Mm. I, it, it, I I totally empathetic. One, I never think that humans should be replaced from certain things. You know, in my world, they always said, "Hey, we no longer need fighter pilots. We can replace them." Yeah, but machines or machine learning or AI, you can't you can't make an argument that it's empathetic, uh, or that you can teach them attributes like empathy uh, and uh, and uh, sympathy and um, things along those lines. Uh, and I understand from the business perspective, cost cutting, if, if you can utilize this thing to write an entire script. Uh, I, I know, and I don't want to paint you in the box because one, I know you're friends with a lot of writers. Um, wh where do you think this is going to go? Well, I will say I'm definitely on the writer's side. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, I'll make my own box. Um, but uh, um, I, you know, I, I hope there's a resolution because the, the asks are not, I mean, the, there's a, where I hope it goes is that there's a resolution that we can get to soon. Um, these are a lot of issues that I think have built up over time and, um, and it's not just the writers, the act, you know, there's a very real chance that SAG goes on strike in you know, a few, you know, we'll see. Uh, in in the support of the writers. July. No, for our own stuff. I mean, the, 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 basically the business has changed, right? So now yeah. with all the streaming platforms, um, the old way of doing business, which was built a lot with kind of networks, um, uh, has, you know, there's basically a new business that hasn't quite been, uh, what's the right word? Not, not, uh, not all sides of this new business, this new streaming model have kind of are, are treating everyone fairly. And so as, and this is something that's, that's really exciting about having a new business where it was like, oh my God, all these streaming networks. And it's really, this is like, I think this is like in the last 10 years. I mean, the entertainment has shifted so much. It, it's a really fun and great thing. That said, there are still people working and creating this content. And if they are operating on the old system and that is how they're getting their residuals, that's how they're getting paid. Um, and that's not... Uh, uh, fair with how we're creating things today, that's a big problem. And so I think what we're, you know, I, I think that um, we're going to see how these two sides um, hopefully can find a way to, to come together. I think there'll be a, um, um, I think that I'm hoping that when, uh, when you can't do publicity for these large projects, I'm hoping that that'll bring the the streamers to the table, and that would, of course, involve SAG going on strike. So mm -hmm. we'll see. But I'll tell you, the um, it is hard enough to have a career uh, as a creative person in this business. Um, let's not make it harder. <laughs> let's make it easier. It, just my luck. Uh, we started uh, a company called Legacy Expeditions where we go do – Pretty cool expeditions, like jumping mm. into Mount Everest, not on oh, Everest, wow. into Everest. We and we in January set four world records, uh, jumping all seven continents in seven days. With seven, 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 seven continents, seven skydives, seven days. Oh, that's never so been cool! Done. We did it. Well, our partner, which we started Legacy Studios, is Dan Myrick, who is the uh, the famed uh, director producer of uh, the Blair Witch Project. Um, mm -hmm. And so we've we've got two documentaries in the can. Uh, we've got a TV show that's being pitched and, and people came to us to pitch it. <clears throat> and Dan's like, I have no clue anymore. He's like, the, the, the industry is in such flux from my time in Hollywood that we don't know which way this is going to go. 
And uh, I'm laughing because I, I always, it seems like I always start companies like right when a recession hits or, or right when COVID hits. Um, so my wife has given me uh, rules of like, just don't start any more businesses or consult me before. You uh -huh. uh, yeah, you know, so we're, we're starting to- Or, or let all your friends know when you're about to start a business because then they can uh, see the, see the, uh, the downturn coming. Yeah, maybe no, no, it's just it, tied to your impulses. I, it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm. I, you know, I was probably a lot better seal, which isn't saying much, than I am a business leader. Uh, I'll figure it out. Give me some time. I'm only five years out of the military, but uh, no, 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 we, we, we did, we, we, we did have good results with uh, one of the documentaries we put on streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. um, we got over a million views. We're happy about that. Drop Zone Everest, uh, the trip where we jumped into uh, the Everest region, uh, which got nominated for zero awards. So we're we're extremely <laughs> proud of that. Uh, versus. Uh, your short film train, which I know uh, won a ton of a uh, ton of awards. Oh. <laughs> um, it, oh, you've did, done a real deep dive here. This is great. Uh, this this is, is, oh, of course, dude. Of course. I except I, I contacted TMZ. They wouldn't give me anything on you unless I paid, and I just I, I don't have the budget. Oh wow! Right now. That, that's that's a little terrifying to me that TMZ feels they have something worth on me that is worth paying for. That's I am terrifying. I am totally kidding with you. I'm totally kidding with you. But um, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, we're we're not gonna. We're not going to go to the uh, the dark areas. Hey, when you win Great. awards like that, and, and knowing that's not the goal, you, that's not why you create it. Though, I mean, people write a book that want to be on the the the, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, sure, uh, bestseller yeah. list. Uh, is that almost like vindication or just a good feeling, or you know, w w or was that a goal going in? It may have been. It's so hard because you you have no control over that stuff, so you like to live your life going for the awards or going for, and this is why the social media stuff is so damaging. I think and I, I've felt it. I mean, it, it, it's like to go in and do it for the response to it is such a, you, you have screwed yourself before you even started. So like, it, it's a really hard thing to do, especially, you know, in this business, because everything is, it's, it's technically the entertainment business. So whether or not you are entertaining or not is the sign of success. And yet, um, making people happy uh, is not always the, the, the best North Star to a creative process. You have to kind of let the story or let the creative idea, the creative impulse take the lead. And then over time, you figure out, oh, yeah, I think it's better this way. It's better this way. Da, da, da. And your instincts will uh, be mirrored by an audience or they won't. Right. And then if they're not, you kind of you can make adjustments, you know, over time. But um, it, so, no, I, I certainly did not think that film was or did not make that film to get any awards. I I um I wanted to make that film um, and there were time, times where I, I almost didn't. But the second that um, Eli Wallach said that he would do it, I was like, oh, my God. And I was terrified because I'd never directed before. And he's like he had been around forever. He was Marlon Brando's landlord. I mean, that's how long he's, he had been around. And he was so generous and loving and, and, and caring and telling stories and um and actually, when, when he passed, I, I was like, OK, I, I can't I can't release this. I don't want this to be the last thing that he did. I, I, it was just I just couldn't handle the the um, I was scared, you know, and I had a, some friends came to me afterwards and was like, you realize that the whole time that he was on set, he was telling stories. Right. I was like, yeah. He's like, well, so he did this as a story like <laughs> he would want you to release the thing. It's another story. So, you know, I kind of dedicated the film to him. And released it that way and and what was really fun about it was that whole film festival tour we did and the awards and everything i felt so much better because it actually wasn't it didn't feel like it was hey i'm getting an award you know it felt a lot more like i made this movie that was a, a thank you and acknowledgement of this really great guy uh who shot this thing at like 94 96 years old and was down to do what was it based, like not far remo removed from a student film. And so it, it felt like I was just honoring this guy, um, which was the intention of the script in the first place of, of kind of honoring uh, the importance of, of a moment. Um, so uh, yeah, the awards were not the thing. If anything, the awards made me feel better that um, uh, yeah. I, I did, I did well enough. So Eli's performance could be seen. Yeah. That's uh, that was... there's no better way to, 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 to honor him. Um, yeah. Well, dude, what, uh, well, first off, uh, I'm in New York, uh, July 3rd. Uh, we're going to, oh, nice. we're going to tandem in some, uh, Fox news correspondents, other, uh, news correspondents. So oh, if you're cool. down for a tandem jump, 
and I'm not putting you in a box. You let me know. But um, for, for the listeners, uh, and we have fun. I, you know, I might break your leg, but you okay. have fun the entire part up to where we land and I break your leg. But, um, and I'm right. joking. I'm I will tell you every single season, uh, before we start shooting, I do something that fucks up my legs. I don't know if I can say that. Sorry. And it's, it's been, I have scars on both knees at this point. So that, I guess the next step would be some kind of bone damage. We've already gone through the skin. So. Well, you, you know what? The, the good thing about tandem jumping is the tandem masters uh, ass hits before, uh, before you or yours ever should. Okay, um, great. It's not that hard. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. We, uh, we took some news correspondents in San Diego uh, for, for one. And you could tell this, this one woman, Marla, um, who's with Fox LA. Awesome woman. Five one, and uh, you could see her in the plane. Just she was quiet, but she was nervous. And uh, when she hit the ground, you know she was just, uh, just wow, piss and vinegar. And she she had the time of her life. She's like, let's do Amazing. it again. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> um, give it some time. Uh, but no, man. Uh, for the listeners, what's what's next for you? Where can they find you? Where do you want them to follow you? Oh, um, well, what's next is uh, the, 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 the existential dread of this strike is what's next. But you can always find me. Uh, social media is just at Asher Grodman. Um, and yeah, it's prepare yourself for um, ghosts, jaguars and puppies is basically the, the content these days. Ghosts, jaguars <laughs> and puppies. <laughs> yeah. Will, I hope you got that. That's the title of the podcast. And that's what Asher is going to be remembered for on Men's Journal. That's right. Uh, in infamy. Okay. Well, brother, hey, I appreciate it, man. Uh, you ever need anything from us, let us know. And for everyone listening, thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me.